Okay, now that's all actually, that's almost everything I want to discuss with you with, in relation to the difference equations. And in fact, there isn't much more. Actually, there is much, well, there is more, but it's already like high stuff. In terms of finding the solutions, you have all like everyone else is having. Every time someone is solving a difference equation, you, you build this polynomial, which by the way, I haven't said that yet. This polynomial, which appeared in the lemma, which is proved, this polynomial is called the characteristic polynomial of difference equation because it supplies the, this, all, uh, the fundamental solutions. Let's just look at the examples. The first example we had was this one, which you can convert into the difference equation of the canonical form from the slide before if you just rearrange the terms like this. And so the characteristic equation for such characteristic equation for such difference equation is this one. It's a linear polynomial. According to the lemma, fundamental solutions, the, well, in that case, we have only one alpha, one or one. Here's my alpha. We don't have any other choices for alpha. And that's the root of, sim uh, it's a simple root. There's no any higher multiplicities for this root. It's a linear polynomial. And so we have my fundamental solution like this. Fundamental and any other solution like this. This is a fundamental solution, to be precise. This is already the linear combination of all possible fundamental solutions. That's why you have all solutions described like this. Second example we have was this example. For that example, we guessed the roots, but now we're going to analyze this solution. We guessed the roots before. Now we do the complete analysis. Here it is. The characteristic equation for this here it is. Here's my characteristic equation, in which we all know it's a perfect square, which means we have only one alpha. We have only one alpha, alpha equal one. But this time, multiplicity of this alpha is two. So according to the lemma, we're facing, we, we, we're having two fundamental solutions. One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. The other solution we guessed with you before. And any other solution will be a com linear combination of these two to meet any particular initial requirement or initial condition. Well, I have another third example. Mm. It's less, like this difference, a difference equation like this. 2xn take x take n take 1 plus xn take 2. Yeah. Just, just to give you some other alternative example. So the characteristic equation for this is this quadratic polynomial. Actually, if you try to, if you try to, to use this f hoc approach we used for this example on my first slide, for this equation, I don't think you will, you will easily find the, you will be able to guess easily fundamental solutions or any other solution for that matter. And the reason for that is this, because if I now take this characteristic equation, which is like so, if I solve it, we have a formula how to solve quadratic equations here. They are. We have two roots here the formula. If I do the arithmetic, we end up with two complex numbers. And so my fundamental solutions in that case, we have two fundamental solutions. Here they are. And that's the reason I don't think you can guess from the top of your head the solution to this difference equation any other way but this way. And if, by, if you need to find a solution which, meet, which meets any particular initial condition, you will need to take a combination of these two fundamental solutions with some unknown coefficients and try to find these coefficients to meet your given initial conditions. There's one extra, extra terminology, extra terminology attached to the difference equation, which I'd like to discuss with you before we move on. Uh, it's a def I, I frame it as a definition. It's called like this. Uh, it, go it goes like this. A fundamental solution, a fundamental solution to a difference equation. In fact, probably I'm... Um... Okay, well, let's keep it fundamental. 
<coughs> a fundamental solution to a difference equation of this type. Any fundamental solution has this type for different alpha and different k, but every fundamental solution has this type. We discovered this in Lemma. Uh, the terminology is this. We call it a stable or unstable, stable or unstable, depending on these two. If the limit of the absolute value of a solution goes to zero, as index goes to, zero, to infinity, then we call it a stable. Otherwise, if the limit is infinity, we call it unstable. In any other case, we do not classify the solution. So if the limit is zero, we classify it as stable. If the limit is plus infinity, we classify it as unstable. Any other values for the limit, we do not classify the solution. In fact, the same terminology is applicable to any other solution as well, not necessarily fundamental one. But for the fundamental solution, you can easily analyze what in terms of alpha, in terms of alpha and k, when the solution is stable and when solution is not stable. So for the fundamental solution, if the absolute value of your alpha, because this is the exponential growth or exponential decay, and this is a polynomial growth. Obviously, if alpha is less than one in absolute value, something you should know very well from the first semester, exponential decay is always quicker than polynomial growth. So if your alpha is in absolute value is less than one, the second factor will dominate the product and the whole limit will go to zero. So your solution is stable when the absolute value of alpha is less than one, if the absolute value of alpha bigger than one, then the solution is unstable. And actually, I haven't put this on the slide, but if the absolute value of alpha is one, and k bigger than one, bigger or equal than one, it's another case for the solution to be unstable. Yeah, it's another case for the solution to be unstable. In case, in case you talk about fundamental solution, if the, if the solution is general solution, if the solution is a combination of fundamental solutions, then you have to do the analysis on the spot. But effectively, what normally happens if in your combination a, an unstable solution is present, then probably the whole solution will be unstable. Yeah, so in this case, in this case, this solution is unstable. This one is neither stable nor unstable because we it's just one. And this one is, is unstable. So oh. this solution is unstable because it goes to infinity when it goes to the infinity. This solution, in order to classify this one, you have to compute the absolute value of your alpha. The absolute value of this alpha is sum of the squares of the real and imaginary part. In this case, it's just root two, uh, one root two, which is less than one. That's why this solution is stable.